No one wants to work anymore, I've heard it said many times as we face a labor crisis in the United States. Counterpoint. No one wants to work on hiring anyone anymore. Yes, I am not going to tell you that the problem is from the ground up. The problem is from the top down. And what CEOs, presidents, and people who run businesses in this country are willing to do to get workers in the door. Now, the first part should be pretty obvious. Pay your people more. Labor, like anything else, is a supply and demand market. So if you are having a problem with supply and the demand is high, prices go up. If you have a lot of supply and low demand, your prices go down. Labor rates should basically work on the same principle. So if you're not getting people through the door, maybe you're not paying them enough. But a lot of the problem seems to be in the service industries. A lot of retail places, a lot of restaurants seem to be suffering really hard. Why is that? Well, one of the big reasons is because a lot of restaurant jobs suck. They, they suck. And while a lot of those employees were furloughed, they had the opportunity to go out and look for other jobs. And so they're not returning to the jobs that they had before the pandemic. You see how that works? They found other jobs. So the real question is, if you had to furlough a bunch of your workers and they're not coming back now, why do you think that is? Because this is not true across the board. There are a lot of places that have been able to fully staff themselves. Of course, they raised the pay rates, or they already paid their staff pretty well before they had to furlough them. Perhaps it's working conditions. Did you ever consider that? What's the benefits plan that you offer at your workplace? Did you ask that question? Probably not, because it's so much easier to go on national television and start whining and complaining that people don't want to work anymore. Maybe they just don't want to work for you. You know, I heard some people complaining that there was like a kid who was like fresh out of high school and he was making $16 an hour so that he could do curbside delivery at Applebee's. And they were complaining about this. But what they apparently did not think about is that that kid is working a job. So he is working. Right? Isn't that the point? You wanted them to get back to work. Well, they are working because you paid them a good rate for the job that they were performing. Is, isn't that the point? Then you got them back to work and you're complaining that they're making too much money at the job that they're now working. I don't get this. Okay, but let's take labor rates and minimum wage and all of those issues of actually paying people in the United States off the table for a second. Let's put them, let's shuffle them off into the corner, put them in a little bitty box, and talk about hiring practices. While the CEOs of companies are screaming, screaming on national television, whining about how people don't want to come to work anymore, let's ask them a few questions. What are you doing to get people in the door? Let's not talk about labor rates for a second. Let's just talk about hiring practices. If you ask anybody, the most common answer for businesses across this country will be, we put out a help wanted sign. Oh, wow, you put out a help wanted sign. Wow, that must have taken you a good five minutes. Whole five minutes put out a help wanted sign. I'm surprised that you don't have people flooding through the doors right now. You, you put in that much effort to try and hire people? You put that much effort in? Mm-mm-mm. Nah, I can't believe that. I just, wow. Then they'll say something like, but I went above and beyond that. I put an ad in the paper. And then they'll immediately start talking about how there's six pages of help wanted ads in the paper. Yeah, because it's what everybody thinks to do. You're not going to get anywhere doing what everybody else is doing because it is the second most bare minimum thing you can do after hanging a help wanted sign on the door. What about if we try a few other things? I am by no means an expert when it comes to hiring people. I'm not really an expert at anything. But what I can tell you is that I worked in HR while I was in retail. So I have a little bit of background when it comes to what works and what doesn't work. One of the main things that works is you pay people more. But let's just put that off the table. I know that's not a thing we like to talk about in the United States. 
this next part of the video is going to be directed specifically at those of you who own businesses. So congratulations, you put out a help wanted sign, that didn't work. You put an ad in the paper, that didn't work. So what, you're just going to go on national television and start complaining about it? Talk to the papers, tell everybody about how it's terrible that you can't get people through the door? That you think it's absolutely fine that you can get cheap labor to just flood in through the door because you did the bare minimum to get them there? Personally, that seems like you're a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Lazy and entitled, thinking that you can do the bare minimum and get a bunch of people hungry for a job through the door and that you deserve that. So what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and whine and complain? Or are you going to try something new? Here's a few things that I had to do when I was in HR to try and get people through the door. You would put in bag stuffers. Doesn't work. Don't bother. But hey, you know, it's something that you can try. Job fairs. Haven't been happening during the pandemic very much, but I'm sure that they're going to pick up. Where are your workers coming from? Have you checked the unemployment office? Do you have brochures of your company, or do you have listings for your company up at the local unemployment offices? How about high schools? High schools are out of session right now, but when they're in session, do you bother to talk to the schools about job opportunities? If you're in trades or anything like that, have, have you talked to the schools about their trades program? If there's anybody that's interested in getting summer jobs? Have you gone to where the workers are? Have you bothered? Have you looked at your competitors? See what they're paying, but also, for that matter, because I know I said I was going to keep that off the table, what are they doing to get people in the door? Who is fully staffed in your area? What did they do? Look at your competition, your most direct competition. Are they faring better or worse at this time? I shouldn't have to explain this to you. This is basic economics. This is basic business sense. Why are you so intent on making the entire country feel guilty for you not getting workers? Why are we going to go on a guilt trip on behalf of you not getting people through the door? I know what you're going to say next. Nathan, that's my name, by the way. These kids today a phrase that's been going on for thousands of years, these kids today don't have the kind of work ethic that my generation did. Your generation had a great work ethic. You built a great company. Okay, show them how it's done. Get down onto the sales floor. Get into the warehouse. Gut a fish. Whatever your business entails, go and do that job down on the factory floor. You know, when I was in HR, I was technically middle management. You would normally think that what I would do is sit in an office all day and work on stuff like this. No, it was only a very small part of my overall job. What I usually ended up doing was rocking trucks, taking product and processing them onto racks, doing new resets on the sales floor, covering breaks for the service desk, running register, doing customer service, putting furniture together. Because if you don't have people to do those jobs, the people in upper management go to do those jobs. If we had district and regional managers in the building when we were pressed for time, they got onto the processing line. They rocked trucks. Because if you don't have your basic workers to do that, your labor down here in the trenches then the people up in the boardroom come down to do that job. And while you, as the CEO, are down there working in the trenches, not just for an hour to show that you understand the common man, but for full shifts at your company, ask yourself a question at the end of the day. What would I expect to be paid for this job? What would you, you, as a CEO, expect to be paid to do that most basic of jobs. And now ask, what are you paying people to do that job? What kind of working conditions would you expect to have working that job? Are you providing that kind 
of working condition for others. We have a notion in this country that there are titans of industry and they built this nation. But the truth of the matter is, is that they built nothing without thousands upon thousands of other people that they hired to do jobs. And you know it, because without that labor force, you don't have a business anymore. And if you really want to work for it, go and do that job. See how you like it. See if it's worth it for you. Because if you can't improve conditions or get people through the door, you're probably going to be doing it a lot more. So I suppose the better question here is, what are you willing to pay somebody so that you don't have to do that job? Think about it. We don't have a crisis of workers not wanting to work anymore. We have a crisis of people high up in industry that don't want to work at hiring anybody, that just want to sit there, whine, and complain that they don't have enough workers, but will do absolutely the most bare minimum to try and get people through the door. It's not that workers don't want to work. CEOs don't want to work anymore. Hiring is your job, and you're not doing it. Your prophecy for the day, if everyone is an essential worker, maybe pay them like they're an essential worker.